Yes, all right. All right is right because I hit the button, um, go live. Hello, everyone, and um, welcome to our webinars, um, one of the next episodes of the Meet the Expert webinar. I would first of all like to welcome our guests. Um, last week, uh, no, that was actually two weeks before, we had Stephen Gibbons uh, from ABB here with us. And um, this time, um, yeah, we have two colleagues um, from Siemens. I would like to warm welcome um, Harald and um, Thorsten from Siemens. And um, yeah, as you are our guests, I would like to put you on the main layout. Um, Thorsten and Harald, I think it's a great uh, chance for us um, to talk to you, to talk to the experts. And uh, first of all, I really want to thank you for um, yeah, um, coming to our webinars. Um, would be super nice if you can just shortly introduce yourself and explain what you do. And um, yeah. Okay, th thank you very much, Jörg. So I, I would like to start um, to introduce myself. So I'm Thorsten Reisinger. I'm responsible for the um, sales activities for the process analytics here in Germany. So um, yeah, we, we have to um, deliver all the GCs, uh, infrared analyzers, analyzer systems, and so on to our clients here in Germany. And yeah, we are together here because I I am um, presenting a kind of um, uh, a story from a customer where we have a system integration project with our Maxim GC and for this reason I'm here today. Yeah, and uh, I'm Harald Mahler. Uh, it's a real pleasure that we have the opportunity to uh, present our uh, story here in this chat, in this webinar. Um, I'm um, in, in the headquarters of um, Process Analytics. So we join together now with uh, the process instrumentation as measurement uh, intelligence. And uh, I'm uh, globally acting as a sales development manager uh, for the gas chromatograph. I have uh, roughly uh, 30 years experience in this business. And uh, it's a real pleasure to uh, do this talk now. Wow, great. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, um, Thorsten and Harald, um, and for, for being here. Jensen. Maybe we also have to introduce ourselves <laughs> very, <laughs> very shortly. My, my dear colleague from Singapore, our vice president, uh, Jameson Chang. Hi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, and um, maybe my name also, my name is Jörg Ehrens. I'm the managing director um, of um, the company AGT PSG. And like I said, we are very happy to have you here. As a small procedure, we very often have, I um, think it would be super nice. Everyone, I mean, we have more than 550 people who signed up for this webinar. And I think um, it makes us all feel a little bit like family. If you can just say hello from wherever you are, um, send us your location, send us your questions. I mean, now we really have the chance with these two experts um, to discuss technical questions um, for this application. So would be super nice just to, to get your comments, your questions, and we will make sure that we have some time to, to answer them. Okay, let's jump into our agenda because I think we have a lot on, um, on our list uh, today. Um, this time, and that's the reason why I'm also very excited, in the last webinar with, with ABB, um, by the way, guys, how did you like it? Did, 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 you, did you see it? We, we saw it. It's wonderful. And, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's already live. I saw it on my handphone, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and, and the guys from, from Siemens, I mean, that was quite a high, high standard or... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it of course uh, uh, puts a lot of pressure to us, yeah, to present <laughs> it, um, also in a, in a kind and easy way. But um, as you can imagine, I'm just responsible for Germany, so normally I'm talking in uh, Hessisch or something like this, which, which is just uh, German and not English. So it will be a challenge for me to, to follow up like uh, the English speaking guy from ABD, of course, but I'm, I'm trying my best. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. 
a professional uh, talk and uh, so we try to continue with uh, the same approach yeah 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 thank you thank you for for, for this feedback no um i must admit it, um it, that was really interesting and also this time i'm very happy um, that we will also next to the presentation we will see we will also see um the the maximum G, um, gc uh, in detail so uh, i'm really looking forward to it yeah this time as i said um or in the last session with abb main focus if we can divide the two fields of um, continuous emission monitoring and process analytics um, i mean there are some areas where it's not so easy to divide um, but this time we have a more clear focus on the process optimization, um, the process analytics. And I'm, I'm very happy um, that we also have a customer success story, so a real um, project uh, which we can share. Um, Jensen, did, did you see the results from the pull I've done? I think um, most of the people were interested to get some information about the sample handling system also in this, uh, in this project, right? Yeah, I, I saw I saw the poor result. In fact, it was a it was a higher than the rest. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, but I think that's an interesting uh, feedback, and we will make sure we are going to focus on this. Um, okay. So, when we look and have an outlook, um, this is the second session here for the Meet the Experts um, uh, webinars. And at the end of July, I'm, I'm very happy that we will have Envea here on board. Um, and this time when Envea is on board, the focus will be more, again, the continuous emission monitoring. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited um, to, to have this session. And then at the end of July, we will have uh, Three, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure three great guests we had, and um, it's going to be interesting to receive your feedback on how you liked it and what you want us to improve in the future. Okay, so short agenda so that um, everyone knows what what can you expect. Um, yeah, first of all, the Meet the Expert series. Um, I wanted to introduce, uh, I can already tell you, because in the background we have some plannings and uh, I have a confirmation that KNF, the pump company, uh, will come to the webinar. We have a confirmation from TÜV, so the German TÜV will join us here. We have a confirmation from SIG, um, the sensor intelligence uh, company and they will also come here so yeah i think it's a pretty nice outlook uh, for the future and if you do have any topics special topics you want us to touch on just just let us know all right yeah um the presentation which the colleagues from siemens um uh, yeah um, prepared for this session here um, is uh, first of all there will be a short product in the overview and then um, I think it will be quite interesting for all of us to understand process optimization by using process analytics. I think this general idea is something which is very uh, yeah very common um, but um, I think um, it will be interesting for us to get some insights um, uh, from from the colleagues there. Um, what do they think about or what do they mean by process optimization? Then we have um, an online gas chromatography, oh, not an easy word, <laughs> preference analyzing liquid samples. And um, this is something I'm, I'm very happy uh, and I'm excited to see um, this use case um, of, of, of the system integration. So, um, Jensen, I think now comes the sweet part for us, so we can lean back <laughs> and hand over to, to the colleagues from Siemens. And um, if I click the right button here, I think uh, we all can see your presentation. I think, Harald, your screen is, screen is on. Um, so, yeah, we are happy to, uh, to hear your presentation. Oh, now I think, Thorsten, we do have a little uh, 
sound issue. We cannot hear you at the moment. But no problem. I think. Can you hear us now? Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. You're back. <laughs> yes, Great. Technical problem with the mobile phone as it heated up a little bit. <laughs> and for this reason, it went. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, technical problems that we uh, were not ready for. Yeah, sorry for this, but I, I think we are ready. <laughs> okay, yeah, very um, good. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, yesterday, we have prepared a little bit with Harald, and we had a session that lasted roughly one hour. So um, we decided yesterday first to shorten or um, to hurry up a little bit. And then we decided to hurry up a little bit. So for this reason, I have to speed up my, my, my language. Yeah. Um, no, but I think there are some key messages that we want to deliver here. So with our presentation, um, we want to give you a short um, introduction to the optimization of a distillation process. So what you can do in such a distillation process, what is a distillation process? And at least we want to give you a short um, introduction about um, a case study for this topic. So with the presentation itself, we will start with a short company introduction. Then we would like to um, go on with the process optimization by using a Maxim uh, GC. Then we want shortly to go into the analyzer technology itself. And at least um, we will present you a little bit about the uh, process GST, um, like he was um, optimizing the distillation process of the PVA plan. So, yeah, very yeah. nice. When we start with the company introduction, um, we, as Siemens, of course, we do also have a very broad analyzer portfolio. So, when we start in the left hand corner, we have the continuous gas analyzers with our uh, new Series 7 and also with our Ultramar 23, which is also belonging to the emission monitoring systems, for example. Um, we on the second um, uh, case, and we have our continuous gas analyzers on the in situ base. So when it comes to corrosive components like HCl, NH3, H2O, or something like this, or also oxygen, when it's a kind of inerting process, for example, then we can use our laser technology. Um, at the first third picture, we can see our process GCs. There we have the um, Maxim Edition 2 in its different um, appearances. So we had our modular oven, which is the, the smaller one, and we have our airless and air bath ovens, which are the bigger ones in the back of this picture. And um, yes, this is our, let's say, product portfolio. When we go back to the um, continuous gas analysis itself, we have the technologies like paramagnetic for oxygen, for example, but we also have electrochemical and uh, this dumbbell um, principle for measuring um, oxygen. And we also have infrared analyzers for measuring CO, NO, uh, SO2, yeah, so the, the emission, emission um, monitoring um, components, for example. And we also have the possibility to use um, a feeder mart, for example, for measuring uh, the complete C uh, within the process, and also we have this color mass series to measure uh, H2 in nitrogen, for example. Wow, um, so that's 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 a that's a rich list uh, of, of components. So, if uh, I know sometimes you cannot separate this uh, so clearly, but the continuous gas analyzer, um, as you already mentioned, Thorsten, is more often used in the field of uh, SEMS, of emission monitoring, continuous emission monitoring, and um, the process gas chromatographs is more the process analytical field. Is that something? Yeah, I, I, I think we can not say that it's just the one or the other. Um, mm -hmm. So when we the continuous gas analyzers, for example, we have them, of course, in the emission monitoring system when we have the, the sample probe, the sample line, the gas cooler and so on, and then going into the analyzer. But we also have this, have this in the uh, process industry, for example, um, yeah, an actual topic like everyone knows is the H2 measurement. Uh, H2 right. in O2 and O2 in H2 in hydrogen plants. So mm -hmm. there are different applications um, like process measurements, like emission monitoring systems. So there's a broad portfolio of it. Yeah. And also yeah. the same for the process GCs. 
Yeah, we have the process GCs as a process GC to control or to um, optimize the process, for example. But you can also use a process GC for emission monitoring, like the flare gas monitoring. So you measure the ah, components okay. before they go into the flare, and then you make the balance for CO2. So it's a kind okay. of emission monitoring, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I understand. I understand. No, that's yeah. It's, it's just. Uh, uh, I know it's, it's not black and white, so it's, no. it's not possible to separate this. Uh, yeah. Okay, but I understand. Thank you for this overview. Great. Correct. Yeah, and and on the left downside, we have our analytical um, application sets. So what we have standardized, for example, is the emission monitoring system. So as we want to measure on a gas boiler or on a gas motor or on a waste incineration plant or on a coke plant or whatever, um, we have a certified system according to the EN5267, um, which is ready for the use in such applications. Um, also, we have a system integration um, center, not just here in Germany and Karlsruhe, but also in uh, Houston and in Singapore, where we build up systems and um, complete systems to a complete design. Yeah, and next wow. to the, let, let's say, hardware, we, of course, do have um, some softwares and um, services. And when we look at the right-hand side, we have our Analyzer System Manager, which is a fairly new um, topic and which is um, coming more and more into the industry because it's um, focusing on reducing the maintenance efforts on the plant and optimizing the maintenance activities. So you are not going out um, steadily to a, to a certain measuring point, but you're going out when it's really necessary. So you will analyze mm -hmm. the KPIs of an analyzer and send out the service technician. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe the last point, the, the service itself. Yeah, we have a broad um, service network, not just in Germany, like I'm responsible for, but also in, in complete Europe and the rest of the world, where we can offer different kinds of services and also trainings directly in Karlsruhe, for example. So this is just one rough overview about what Siemens is doing in the world of process analytics. Um, just to highlight one technology, because it's fairly new, it's our GA700. And you can see here that there are two different versions of cases. So there's the wall mount unit and the rack mount unit, which you can see in the right hand side. And in each of these devices, you can put individually two modules inside and they are really modular. So this means you have to just plug three um, um, plugs onto the uh, module and it will be ready. So for example, when you exchange a module, you have to put on the three plugs and you will get the data from the central unit to the module, vice versa. So you can say, okay, I want to update or download the data from the central unit, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, with this um, new series, we have a modern con communication concept, so the classical 4 to uh, 20 milliamps, but also we have the possibility to use a Matbus TCP, for example, for a second data channel. So you can really use the information that are inside the analyzer to optimize the maintenance efforts. And as the, um, let's say, fourth point of this um, slide, the predictive maintenance activity. We have a technology, for example, in our Ultramat um, 7, where we can not just say that the infrared source is um, coming to an end at a certain time, but we are measuring the intensity of the, um, of the infrared source. And with this measurement, we are really able to say, OK, we need to exchange the infrared source until blah, blah, blah. And then, of yeah. course, we are, we are really predictive uh, in, in yeah. case of I think that's that's very interesting to hear, and uh, thank you for sharing this, Thorsten. I mean, also remembering the ABB presentation, um, I think it's quite interesting to hear in which direction the the whole industry is heading. And yeah. um, I mean, that's that's not just a secret, but also for the sample handling components, we as a manufacturer of this. Uh, um, 
thinking a lot about what can we do in this field because yeah. um, I, I think you would agree to to the statement and even maybe even the numbers we saw at uh, ABB session 70 percent of the mistakes and problems occur from the sample handling system right so um, but I think it's interesting to see that the the analyzer itself is is heading into this direction yeah yeah um, I think um, this is also why Harald is also told um, at, at the first um, introduction that we are now the, the measurement intelligence. So this means we want to put intelligence into our measurement devices and to get the intelligence out of devices to optimize the process of our customers. So this right. is this is the, the story, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. And right. It, it, yeah. 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 All right. So I, I would like to focus a little bit more on the process chromatography. Um, let's say uh, I, I think it's important also to give a, a little bit of a history, a retrospective about a technology to understand better our philosophy and our strategy to serve this market by process GC. So in 1998, um, the product has been introduced, uh, our latest product, which is the Maxim GC, in that time, un still under the flag of applied automation, uh, the advanced Maxim with uh, two uh, major improvements, uh, the parallel chromatography and the electronics modularity. Then in uh, 2002, the Maxim Edition 2 has been launched, and this is exactly the same product platform, I would say, as we have today, um, we added uh, a specific uh, oven technology uh, to this. Uh, Airbus has been already in place, but we added the LS oven and uh, some other performance features like the valveless switching, which we uh, sold quite a lot uh, for uh, from the Siemens platform. Uh, since a long time already, and uh, the liquid injection well for specific high boiler components. Uh, then in uh, 2012, another first to market feature has been introduced, um, another uh, modular oven type uh, with uh, um, a new compactness of the technology itself, especially the analytical modularity. This was a, a new feature. I think it's a real differentiation feature uh, in the market to have a modular oven uh, available. And uh, in the uh, in recent times, uh, the innovations uh, has been focused on um, more on the simplification of the platform, simplification uh, how to operate the analyzer just by a color touch screen HMI. So it's comparable with a, a normal cellular phone. So it's very easy to handle uh, an intuitive gas chromatograph portal software. This is the remote uh, workstation software uh, to get access from remote. Uh, also on the sampling system, there are innovations uh, to put more intelligence as uh, uh, Tosten said already. So a kind of smart sampling system and uh, the latest innovation is also uh, on simplification of the platform by an intrinsic safe concept of uh, detector technology paired with a higher sensitivity of the conductivity detector. So this has been um, some improvement in the last uh, year. Uh, important other thing is that in 2019, uh, we um, are producing the Maxim Edition 2 from our new lead factory, new state-of-the-art factory in Houston. Uh, so Houston is the center of chemical petrochemical industry, so I think it's a good choice to have um, the production also in this center. Uh, we have two other uh, local factories uh, in Europe, in, in Karlsruhe, in Germany, and in addition in Singapore. So this is the way how we are covering the market. Um, just brief words about the sampling system. So uh, we are here in a, in a webinar also with a focus on sampling. Uh, so um, also for gas chromatograph, sampling is important because it's an extractive uh, way to get the sample into the DC. Um, and uh, more and more the discussion is in the direction to 
uh, have a higher uh, level of digitalization. And this is exactly the uh, reason uh, why this uh, smart sampling system has been developed to get in more information, more digital information about the temperature, the, uh, the pressure, the flow, because as uh, Jörg said, so 70% are in this area um, of the failures are happening because of the sampling system and not because of the analyzer itself. And this is exactly implemented here. Um, you see here uh, the a typical device. It's a traditional sampling system completed with a digital sensor. And this can okay, be... Okay, so, so uh, that means um, the, 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 you want to, or uh, the, the, the Maxim is capable to receive more information from the sampling system, like you mentioned, the temperature and, and the pressure. Um, this is something you can directly connect to the um, Maxim, or how would that work? Yeah, that is correct. So this can mm -hmm. be directly connected. Uh, you see here a blue cable. This is the intrinsic safe cable which will be connected to the interface uh, inside of uh, the analyzer itself. So you get all your data um, accessible through the workstation software. You see this on the right-hand side of, of this uh, um, picture here. And yeah. uh, so it's, uh, I think this is the way to improve the intelligence of the system. You are right. Okay, very good. And, and if there is some alert or something, the, the, the Maxim can inform the, the, the end user or the, the PLT uh, system, which is connected to the Maxim, or how would that in, in the yeah. probes that Jax exactly. work? So alarming mm -hmm. is, is implemented. You can set uh, some alarm levels. Uh, and uh, the smart thing is that uh, it is more uh, predictive or prevented maintenance um, possible because you see a trend in changing the flow before uh, eventually the flow is blocking or oh. uh, also the bottle management can be improved uh, because uh, before the uh, calibration case is uh, running to be empty, uh, you get a signal already and so uh, the calibration case can be changed. This is uh, the procedure which is getting more and more important to improve also the sampling. Okay, Jemsen, I mean, that would be interesting. I think you are the only person who had some real working experience in sample handling systems. What do you, what do you think about, I mean, uh, about this new development? Well, I was, I was very impressed. In fact, I heard uh, particularly on the Maxim, I mean, apart from the gas chromograph, was that, you know, this, uh, he was saying about the uh, valve. The valve right now is no more sliding and rotary. Is, is, am I right? You, you have a contactless uh, sample valve. Is that correct? Uh, we have since a long time uh, a diaphragm valve inside oh. of the GC, which is uh, doing the injection of the sample. Okay. That is correct. So uh, we have also uh, plunger valves. Uh, I have uh, some uh, yeah, more details about this also in, in the other section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think we have to. We have to look. We have to look at the time. But uh, it's just super interesting. No, honestly, because I think. Um, I mean, the GC technology. When when I first saw it, I thought, hey, it's all, only forty years old. Mm, uh, but um, I think it's super interesting to understand where in our industry, where is the real innovations? What can we, you know, to do to improve the systems? And therefore, I'm, I'm yeah, happy to, to see um, these, uh, these developments there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Thank let's you. proceed. Yes. Um, and this is, uh, I think, the point of, of the, the age. Um, we have, of course, a life cycle strategy. And uh, this is, I think, a very good um, slogan for that is building the future with the proven. This means all the product innovation can be easily retrofit to older product. Uh, it's a kind of backward competency. And uh, two examples for that. This is uh, on the one hand side, uh, this uh, color touchscreen uh, HMI, which you see here uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the right hand side here and um, the other um, the, the other um, innovation which uh, is the 
part of the concept of life cycle strategy is, for example, also the intrinsic safe uh, thermal conductivity detector. So even if we have older GCs, we can upgrade them to the latest uh, state-of-the-art technology. And this uh, protects also the user's investment on the complete installed base uh, uh, in, in, the, in the production plan of our customers. This is the mm -hmm. idea of, about um, the life cycle spread, building the future with the food. Mm -hmm. in, in this certain case, um, Harald, is this a performance improvement or a safety improvement? Um, why, why would a customer change it? Yeah, so for the intrinsic safety tech TCD, it's a performance improvement. It means uh, with this detector, we achieve uh, detection limits uh, for a thermal conductivity detector very close to, uh, down to very low PPM levels. Okay. And also a um, um, safety improvement because intrinsic safe devices are um, much easier to handle. In case okay. of any maintenance activities, it's easier to handle. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I stop my questions to make sure that we can. <laughs> oh, the questions make it, are, make it are really time. good. Uh, I like these questions. Um, I would like to proceed now from a completely other perspective, and this is uh, the process optimization. So it's more uh, the perspective of the user, the user's point of view. What is the motivation to implement uh, process analytics in general? but especially, of course, uh, here in this talk, uh, the process for metography. And um, so in principle, the pressure to the market is everywhere. So it's uh, on the side of, of us, of, uh, of a producer of, of a process analytic, a supplier of process analytic, but also, of course, uh, on the side of our customers, uh, of the uh, operators of the production plan, to be uh, to have the highest efficiency and um, so and three major points why this is so important uh, I would like to show you here this is the energy cost of course um, therefore uh, the process need to be optimized uh, kind of advanced process uh, control uh, this is also that uh, the data need to be provided as fast as possible because sometimes uh, the processing plant, uh, for example, for reactors especially, uh, has a very fast change in the process. For example, um, to avoid uh, that any, if, if you have a process poison, then uh, it's important to avoid that they uh, are, uh, have an influence on the degradation of the plant. So for catalysts, for example, more and more, um, therefore, more and more, the quality is very important down to very low trace components. Um, and uh, at the end, to avoid that uh, the, the, the product itself at the end of, of the pro production process is out of spec, because if you um, have to retreat your uh, high sample volume, this costs a, a hell of money, of course. And uh, this is the reason that even very low traces, as an example, uh, we see that in ethylene plants, uh, ammonia measurement is down to low PPM levels. It's more and more important. Uh, if you look back 10, 15 years, uh, nobody asked for this so specifically. And um, this is a, a typical example why uh, process analytics is getting more and more uh, important uh, to optimize the process efficiency. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's. I think it's okay to say that um, yeah, process optimization at the end has a business case. So I have an investment, and in a certain amount of time, I will have um, when, when it's yeah, I will have a return on investment. Um, when we compare this to the emission monitoring. Um, I think it's fairly uh, very often that it's local regulations which force the operator yep. to implement a measurement like this, right? And in these cases, which you named, it is, um, yeah, it's, yeah, re reducing costs yeah. at the end is maximizing the, the, the outcome, right? Yeah, that is, that is correct. So I think this is a, is, is a significant difference 
uh, mm -hmm. to uh, emission monitoring who is more triggered from regulation uh, right. process mm -hmm. uh, is triggered by uh, investment and uh, right. efficiency. Okay. Uh, uh, um, yeah, a business case is behind that. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. but you are absolutely right. Yeah, the, the payback time for such an analyzer is is there. Yeah, and you can really measure it and you can say okay it's about a half a year or a year or so and then the complete investment is, is back mm -hmm. but it's not always about the investment itself it's also about let's say the world is getting greener and greener and efficient processes means less energy less feed less output less waste and so on and this makes the world a little bit of greener yeah so this mm -hmm. kind of let's say process Optimization is not about all about money. It's also about the environment. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, I think it's 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 also <laughs> good to say that if there is money, it's easier to change yeah. the mindset <laughs> of the people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, very, very often, every, very often, we have these discussions uh, about emission monitoring, where you think, okay, you must invest into the best sample handling system, into the best analyzer. Because I mean, this is uh, yeah. This will be your explanation um, that you can exist in the future. That you make sure you measure all your emissions super accurate. But still, the people are just price driven, and the operators are just price driven. And uh, so, okay, but but interesting, yeah, yeah. Okay, and. Uh... So, is everything working? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shortly. Yeah. Uh, they have to go to the presentation. No problem. The, the discussion was too intense for the, <laughs> for yeah, yeah, the presentation. Yeah. For the presentation. That could be the it, case. It, it, would be, it would be too easy if there would be no technical problems. <laughs> <laughs> absol absol absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. Now we are great. back again. So uh, <laughs> yes, I think an great. excellent application to uh, show this, to explain the, the benefit for the user, is especially for gas chromatograph, uh, a fractionator tower. Because this is, uh, I think, um, one of the major applications um, which uh, gas chromatographs are used. And uh, it uh, is everywhere in a chemical plant, I would say. So if you... Uh, drive um, uh, along a, a chemical plant, then if you see a tower, I, you are quite sure behind the tower there is gas from it. I think this is uh, easy to identify in principle. And uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, a typical P and ID here. And you find here a couple of um, control elements, control element, element for the temperature, for the flow, but also for the analytics. And uh, the measuring points in a fractionator for analytics is typically at the outlet, uh, at the overhead, but also at the bottom. And the uh, target is to identify the purity, to, con uh, to, uh, to measure the purity, and then to do further action. This is uh, the idea, uh, this is the, the typical approach for uh, process gas chromatography in a fractionator mm -hmm. um, So what is what is the real value? And I, I would like to show here shortly a, a, a typical uh, view on that. Um, and this is, for example, if you have um, if you have a design spec um, with a maximum impurity, let's say this is an example of two percent, then uh, this curve shows you. Um, the more you reflux, the higher the impurity you get. This is uh, the typical uh, uh, yeah, develop or uh, yeah, trend if you have a distillation tower. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you can go very close to the right side to the maximum. The problem is if you say, okay, uh, let, let's go to 1.5% uh, impurity, that there is a kind of fluctuation here. Uh, for of the process. This means you have uh, uncertainty and you go very close to the design spec. 
because the curve here is very flat. This is very, very risky. So typically, or uh, maybe the operator would say, okay, I go to the conservative point uh, on the steep curve. Uh, the, yeah, the fluctuation is the same, but the uncertainty is, is much smaller. The problem is the energy costs are increasing because you have to heat up and cool down your color much off, more often, and the production rate is lower because the reflux rate is higher. And therefore, if you have a, install a, a gas chromatograph, then because of this uh, additional information of, of the concentration of your process, you can go very close to the design spec with mm. uh, low energy cost uh, uh, with low energy cost and a high production. This is the reason that if you are driving uh, over the, the chemical plant, you see behind uh, the fractionation tower also the gas chromatograph. So, so it's uh, kind kind of uh, to say you are kind of, you're reducing the safety margin, so to say. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we know this example uh, also for the quality level of output, right? You have to achieve 95%. And in order to make sure that you do not have 93 or 94, you might always have an output of 99, right? Which is not... Um, okay, I think we got your message. Yeah, yeah. you got the point. Uh, that, mm -hmm. Exactly. This is uh, it, it's a marching topic uh, for the producer. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. he get has more uh, more flexibility to run the process. Right. Um, so, and uh, this is uh, what you said before. What is the return on investment? Um, so, these are typical statements, I would say, also from our customers, as an example, that uh, you can run your process much closer to the economic optimum, uh, or the payback pe period is also important, of course, and. So it could be below one year, I would say. Um, I'm quite sure that in some cases it could be below one month eventually. So it, this is, of course, also a secret from our customers, uh, right. which are uh, not so discussed openly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Got it. Um, yeah. And uh, the profitability is uh, already starting from one analysis per day. So this is a, a question about... Uh, is it uh, useful to go for an online analyzer versus a lab, lab analyzer? And so uh, there are very strong reasons to go for online because um, it is very profitable. This is, um, I think, important point. Okay, so, so this is the point of continuous measuring versus uh, laboratory uh, batch. Uh, analysis um, and, and, and the difference there. But I'm, I'm very happy to see the case study and to get more information about the sample handling system because I might add one idea. I mean, the return on investment might be connected to the design of especially the sample handling system because if you have a, a very high maintenance effort sometimes we see this in the design of a uh, sample handling system i mean you could um, yeah add some additional filter some intelligence even to your sample handling system but if you have to go there very often to clean filters uh, um, i think the profitability uh, will be also reduced right yeah, uh, I agree absolutely. So I think the calculation of uh, return on investment is not only the um, capital expenditures, it's also the right. rate expenditures. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So very excited to see because I think we have to speed up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there is a benefit on product quality, energy efficiency, but also process safety because uh, compared to lab, Nobody has to uh, extract the sample, walk with it, uh, maybe a critical sample to the process, uh, to the lab, and on. So also this is important. Uh, you see here a typical picture. And uh, let's go to uh, a little bit more detail about the analyzer technology itself. Um, there are many reasons uh, why uh, process optimization um, is, is there. There are many uh, technologies um, in the market for that. Um, so you see popping up here uh, some uh, technologies. 
Of course, uh, they are in competition with chromatography, um, but there, is all, there are also uh, some differentiations in target application, installation requirements, and especially overall flexibility. I would like to point out especially the flexibility of the technology of chromatography, uh, with why this is uh, still um, such important and uh, is, uh, is, uh, is covering a lot of application in the market. So it's uh, a process, uh, it's a technology which is established over decades. So I would say if I, I'm, uh, since a long time in the market and uh, all uh, again and again uh, there are discussions okay uh, chromatography replacing uh, spectroscopy is replacing chromatography more and more because it's more simple and so on uh, eventually uh, also not uh, attractive sometimes uh, but nevertheless uh, if you look have a look over the time the uh, the amount of GCs which are sold into the market are uh, very stable. Uh, this means chromatography has a, a real reason uh, and is established also today in the market. Um, because, and this is, uh, I think, uh, the important point here, because it can be easily automated, uh, you can measure many, many components simultaneously, not only one, two or three. Uh, you Typically, you measure maybe between three and ten. Sometimes uh, there are applications to measure up to 100 uh, components, for example, the PINA application. And it is interference-free because you have a real physical separation. I think this is important. And in addition, not only uh, application, uh, a measurement for liquid, uh, for vapors, it, it, you can also measure the That is, uh, I think, important to know. Mm -hmm. um, just very briefly, uh, the, the functionality to so the injection uh, is done by a homogeneous uh, sample, uh, a single phase sample. The carrier gas is pushing uh, this sample through the system. But the separation happens, this uh, unique uh, point of uh, separation with different to spectroscopy. Uh, you, you have an hot oven. Um, it is either isothermal, which is m most of the cases isothermal, but we have also solutions for Temperature programmable oven on the right hand side, you see an isothermal oven, an airless oven type. Uh, in terms of uh, CO2, dis CO2 discussions, uh, I think this is getting more and more important because it's a kind of green solution. And mm -hmm. uh, after eluting all the components, the, the measurement will happen by detecting this uh, through uh, different detector principles, thermal conductivity or flame type which is FID and FPD. So this is the, the principle, and uh, it is very stable and reliable. This brings me a little bit more to the use case. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can also shortly show, uh, eventually, it's, I think the right moment to, to show uh, the chromatograph yeah. alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I will leave the studio from this place and I will go with my handy to the to the other one and I will step back here. Yeah. So I will okay. be in the background for you in, <laughs> in a couple of seconds. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Just log on. Just log on. Ah, that looks good. Add to oh. stream. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh. I, I think that yep. looks good. Um, yeah, perfect. Put it on solar layout. Can you can you move the camera again? Um, ah, yeah, yeah, of course. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Great. Okay, you see now the the analyzer. Uh, we we are sitting here in uh, in the factory, uh, in our application lab where typically and normally the FATs are uh, uh, realized, and uh, you see here a gas chromatograph which is used for uh, feasibility tests. So this is uh, our TC because that's the reason that you have this uh, nice uh, color on the door. And uh, this is a double oven TC, isothermal TC. Uh, I, it, it has uh, somehow a preference in, in Europe. And uh, there is, this is also very often sold in, in the other regions, in Asia or Americas. And uh, if we open the door, you see the analytics here. So it is, and this is uh, what Jameson has mentioned, valve switching, 
Met drup drup. Exactly here are shown. Uh, here, this is the the valveless switching device, and the similar mm -hmm. solution we have also in our use case. And if okay. you go on the left side, then you see the injection valves, and the injection valves are um, this is a for prepared here for liquids. We have two different types of injection valves, which I will show you later, uh, to inject liquid phases into. Um, the analyzer to to separate the components. This is a it's a more complex device here because you have the flexibility to do different um, um, versions of uh, injection valve uh, for the feasibility study. But this is uh, the way we uh, organize our solution for our customers. Yeah, great, great. Ah. Ah, it it works. Oh, it's so, uh, no. Yeah, I will, we will I, I, move back. Oh. oh, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> yeah, it's always always a uh, you know gas chromatograph or something that is uh, you know once upon a time there was a physical properties analyzer like distillation using method D ninety six. You know, the, uh, just like a, a boiling and then over the over the collection. But today, it's all substituted by the gas chromatograph, you know. So, okay, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can see you. Yeah, okay. this, this is the liquid injection well, Fian. One more time in, in, in complete. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah great. great. So, we are getting closer to our use case. Um, <laughs> Just to uh, explain a little bit uh, this functionality. So if you have a liquid, um, there is one very nice option to vaporize this liquid. And this is uh, already on the sampling system itself by uh, using a heated pressure regulator. I think it would be, this would be a very nice uh, way to do it. Uh, so you all would like to love it because uh, you need a lot of heated sample lines. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so, good. <laughs> yeah, so for uh, these are low boiling components, LPG or C4 hydrocarbons, then you can do that. This happens quite often, and uh, just a gas injection valve is needed on the analyzer itself. This is one option. Mm -hmm. uh, another option, and this is what uh, Tosten showed is the liquid in so-called liquid injection valve. And this is a plunger type valve. You have different uh, injection volumes. You can mount this uh, valve um, on, on, an, uh, on an oven outside, typically uh, also on double oven. If you have two ovens, you can mount it on both sides. <laughs> uh, we have also very special um, plunger type, which has so as are called uh, flash heaters where the plunger itself is directly heated. Then you can analyze also high, very high boiling components, 400 degrees and, and higher, for example, linear alpha olefins or um, uh, um, phenols, for example. This is uh, another option. And uh, the, the third option, and this is also, you have seen also on, on the gas chromatograph live, this is a kind of micro volume injector using a cold on a cold on column injection. So this is a, a way, especially which is very often used in the lab GCs. But we have also options to do this in our process. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's a little bit uh, more detailed uh, about the technology, and of course, all these uh, different uh, components which are integrated in a GC must somehow harmonize. And this is uh, the reason that we have a real speci specialist in our application labs to do that, to arrange the, to do the right arrangement. I think this is very important. Yeah, and these are the, the pictures in more detail, how it looks like, uh, the different variants. And in our, on our machine, you have seen especially this device here, and uh, this device here below. So this testing machi machine is able to. Wow, okay, impressive. Looks complicated. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's not but, so yeah. complicated, but you need the experienced persons to handle that. Yeah. Uh, 
very quickly about um, the interface between sample and analyzer. Of course, uh, you need uh, you need to have a, a tight solution, tight uh, valve, a tight material. It must be inert. Um, the vaporization temperature is important, so we can uh, adjust this individually uh, so that there are no memory effects, no discrimination. Um, of course, on the sampling side, the uh, sample must be clean, particle-free, uh, and you have to have a, a constant sample. I think this is very important. and. Uh, we have to take care that this works very well. The sampling system plus the GC, this is a kind of team and only teamwork is, uh, I think, comes to, uh, you will get a, a right result. That is uh, very important. Yeah. So this is my summary now for uh, this technology part. Uh, process chromatography is powerful, um, not only for gas samples, also for liquid samples over a wide range of boiling points. So we are very flexible to handle samples, either gas phases or liquid phases. Uh, important is the method development and the application know-how in our lab, in the labs from uh, the supplier uh, to realize the samples. And finally, the Maxum provides a lot of flexible analytical toolkit to um, handle the application in a optimized way. I think this is very <coughs> important. And this, uh, I, I think, is the right moment now that we switch over to the use case yeah. itself. So, uh, Thorsten is uh, very keen to tell here a little bit more about the use yeah, case. That's, that's great, Harald. Thank you so much. Uh, Thorsten, I mean, now you have uh, three minutes left. No, I'm kidding. I, I, thought, I, I thought you in the beginning that I have to hurry up a little bit in the end. But <laughs> Yes, um, it was um, a use case about the polyvinyl alcohol production plant here in, in Frankfurt in, in Germany. And it was an integration of an unprocessed analyzer package at the Curare Europe. And um, there were, let's say, three parties inside this uh, kind of project. We had the Curare as the process expert itself. We had AGT PSG with Gerhard um, as system integration experts and as, let's say, um, help us also for the X concepts and so on. And we had uh, Siemens, uh, so, so us as the analyzer experts um, to design and to develop the, the GCs and the GC solution itself. Um, then, of course, we had the project um, start, um, or, or what does it mean, uh, what does it need to have when the project starts? First of all, the end user has to create or specify a wish about what he wants to measure. He wants to measure at this point, at this point, at this point, and he wants to measure on these certain points following components. And at this project, for example, because we um, told previously that there are different components and different samples, um, we had seven um, streams, seven process streams itself with, let's say, various components and with various um, measurement components. And for the reason that it was not so easy to handle all of these streams because they were really differentiated um, between each other, um, we had to make a, a, a feasibility study because some of these um, um, uh, measurement places tended to polymeriz polymerization. So this would mean that the, there was a potential that the probe or the sample um, would stock. All of mm -hmm. these were available. Um, one was um, not just polymer polymerization, but there was a stock of the sample um, as it falls under uh, 20 degrees. And, and also Harald said, yeah, this is something that Jörg uh, is, is, is uh, looking, looking for. Um, the repeatability, repeatability of all components was crucial. So it was a really okay. focused because the customer said, when we want to do something like this, it has to be optimal. And for this right. reason, the repeatability was crucial. And from the analyzer itself, we had to handle different temperature level from the ovens itself to say, okay, we can separate the low boilers and the high boilers. And mm -hmm. as the sample was so close with these temperature levels, it was not easy um, to handle this. 
and at least everywhere was Arctic Zone 2. So for this reason, it was, yeah, let's say, a, a complex project. Right. And when we go from theory to practice, we had the project start, then we made the application study, then we had a technical solution, then we had a technical solution with the sampling system, the technical solution as the system integration package, and at least we had the project execution itself. And when we say, okay, at the project start, we were um, asked where to install the complete thing. Is it in a new shelter outside? Is it in an inner analyzer room or some, somewhere directly in the field? But um, when we focused more and more on the inner analyzer room, there were sample line lengths up to 105 meters where <laughs> AGT, PSG made, made the mounting for this. And um, so the sample line lengths were really far away. But in any case, although the, the sample was straight away, um, there were many reasons to install the GCs directly in the room and not in a new um, analyzer house. So this was the <laughs> room as it started. And it was just a normal, let's say, room. It was not an analyzer room. There was no X concept. There were no tox detection or something like this. So there was just a small room. Um, yeah. Um, then we made an application study, and this is something really special because, as I told previously, the sample itself was not that easy to handle. And we had to consider where to go, for example, with the air consumption of the GC itself, with the, with the heated air, into the room. The room is heated up and the analyzer, final analyzers would feel, would feel, fell. And for this reason, we thought about what alternative alternative do we have and we said okay let's think about the feasibility study and make a test if we can use the airless gc instead of an air bath gc so that there's no air inside and just minor temperature changes and with this application study we evaluated the um, analytical frame um, conditions and the outcomes have been that there were three um, airless GCs which were installed, not above, so there was a, a typing uh, mistake of my person. And um, yeah, so for this reason, we um, showed with the application feasibility study that we can separate everything, that we have the repeatability that is necessary, we can use the airless GCs, and the complete X concept um, and analyzer concept was easier because we do not have to use the air bath GCs like like the um, so, 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 Thorsten, for me no. to understand if someone has an application and he's not sure if, if your technology can measure this uh, so you offer this feasibility study or how can i understand this correct okay so, and then the customer can uh, come to us with his sample for example and say okay this is the sample that we want to analyze of the process gc is it possible or not and right. if we say, okay, this is possible during the application study, we also say, okay, this is the repeatability, this is what we have as um, detection limits and so on. So this is something that we can do here in Karlsruhe and also on the other side. So, so let, let, let's say the one part of the project, uh, the risk of that the analyzer is not capable to measure the component, this is something you can erase with this uh, feasibility study kind of correct yeah. okay so the, the the only the only uncertainty is then bringing this into the field and, and making the sample handling system working in perfect harmony with the analyzer right correct absolutely okay. correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so and um what, what we also showed in this feasibility study was that there was no polymerization in the gc this was also kind of problem that might be okay. of yeah. And um, for this reason, we were really, really happy after the feasibility study that um, everything was fine so far. Mm -hmm. And um, this is also the GC that we have here. So this is also our feasibility GC. Right. And okay. Yeah, then we thought about the analytical solution <laughs> so that it was two maximum double LS GCs using four trains. Each train was there for high boiling and low boiling points and this two mm -hmm. times and also on the on the second gc the self installation 
and um, there was another double airless oven using two different frames. So three GCs. And of course, we need to consider the sample preparation system itself. And also there we had to think about where to put the sample preparation system because you cannot do this big amount of sample into the analyzer room itself. So the question was where to install it. Right. And um, next to this, where to locate the sample preparation system, there was also the question how to design and how to set up the analyzer room itself. And yeah, this was the kind of a solution. Yeah, um, we had this fast loop, which was located outside the analyzer room itself. So this was on the on the back side of the analyzer room itself. And to overcome these large distances, we build up a fast loop system that we can also purge for maintenance reasons so that you can really put all the components outside and exchange them or replace them or clean them. And um, it was also the question how to handle the sample return. So where to go with the sample? It's not just getting the sample out because it's always liquid, but you have to also think about where to go back with it. And um, some yeah, that, of that's, that's that's an that's an interesting point. You know, when whenever we talk about the emission monitoring, uh, I it's mean, going this is not yeah, over the roof. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it, it's just not so crucial. But I completely understand. And depending on the yeah, even the the the, the quantities you have, uh, yeah, okay. So, so what what did you finally do with the with the probe? Yeah, some of the probes um, went back directly into the swamp of the distillation process and right. were um, redestillated, so to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. And um, some of these were just going into a, a small um, yeah, waste um, line, uh, but these were just the, the small amounts of sample that were going inside the analyzer room these were putting out into the waste line. But okay. the rest was okay. going really directly from the head of the um, uh, distillation to the swamp of the distillation itself. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. And when, when we then think about um, the analyzer room itself, um, yeah, there was nothing inside. It was just a room. And <laughs> for this reason, we had to think about what needs to be considered in terms of X and tox alarming uh, devices. And we um, made a suggestion and discussed this a lot with the um, experts from uh, InfraSurf also and with Kurarei. And at the end, we had this installation with the X and TOX devices. We had uh, a ventilation concept where we said, okay, what amount of air do we need to bring into the analyzer room to, um, to say, okay, everything is, is safe inside this room. We had to think about how to secure that the sample from the fast loop, if there's some mistake or so, is not running into the analyzer room itself. So we had the sample um, shutoff concept um, where the sample shutoff valve was outside the analyzer room. For, 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 for leakage issues. Uh, Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And wow. um, like I said, the one, one stream had to be heated up yeah, um, be, because there was the stocking or the blocking um, with the 20 degrees. We had really to make sure that from the sample um, sampling point, the 105 meters onto this fast loop and then to the analyzer room has to be heated up. And you can see it in the, in the uh, picture in the middle that also this kind of um, components were really um, thick isolated to make sure that there was no um, temperature fall. So, and um, yeah, th this is also a point, don't miss the last meters of heating inside the analyzer room because if the sample would stock in this kind of uh, room, then of course you will have a problem and you have to uh, exchange all the components. So for this reason, yeah. heating is, is really important. I think, Thorsten, this is very valuable and I always feel, Jensen, um, it, it's so interesting, right? On the one hand side, we talk about, you know, this, uh, yeah, um, analyzer technology, this, uh, yeah, super high sophisticated developed components. And on the other hand side, and I think that's also part of our, of our job, of our business, um, you have to bring this into real life then. And then you are touching on these very basic 
very basic problems, but you have to solve them. And you, you need to have, I think that's, uh, Thorsten, if I understand you right, um, you, you have to solve them in a very solid and uh, way. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you might have a good measurement for one month or maybe two. But I mean, this is, uh, this is a machinery or this is um, yeah, a solution which should operate for, for quite a while, right? Absolutely, yeah. 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 In, fact, in fact, on our YouTube, uh, you know, maybe we should upload that uh, our heated line, right? That, uh, how our heated run, line run into the Siemens Maxim, the connections. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. all the terminations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think agency. after the webinar we should we should put it up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's one of the videos which which is clicked most. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's true. No, because it's very practical, and um, yeah, I think that that really shows the complexity of these type of projects. And um, I mean, Thorsten, from your experience, if one of these uh, yeah elements fails the whole chain will not work as designed, right? Yeah, the, the one point is what happens if it fails and what failed. So if there's a leakage or whatever and there's a mounting mistake or a mistake on the sample preparation itself, you may have a tox alarm or you have an X alarm. So what does this mean? This would mean that the shutoff goes down and that the GCs will not measure something uh, anymore right. and this would right. mean that you have to go back to the lab analysis and make your regular yeah. lab analysis so and this yeah. is not, not the thing that um, when you put such an effort and carpet into such a project that you want to have out of it. so for this yeah. reason everything has to work together like Harald also mentioned and yeah. um, yeah. So it would be would be super interesting to see uh, or to hear what the customer finally said because we have to have a look at our uh, <laughs> at our watches. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, a strategic partnership. So this is what I I call the presentation for me is much more than uh, just delivering project uh, products. It's about making something real. Yeah, making putting the products and uh, analyzes together, make a sampling system and deliver a kind of solution. And the first point that we learned was analyzer projects need efficient collaboration and partnership because nothing is from the start like you have it in the end. <laughs> so right. um, also, if, if, you, if you look at EPC projects, for example, you have an EPC drawing with um, exact P and IDs, but in the end, after the project, the not the complete design but parts of the design will will be changed and you have yeah. to put effort and know-how and thoughts into this uh, concept super valid super valid points james and i think our partners worldwide will appreciate that especially the system integrator that they can show this uh, also to the end users yeah sorry Justin. Yeah. yeah, and also projects are too complex to cover all the possibilities and variants um, at the starting point. So this is what I mentioned so far. Right. And yeah, don't miss the last meters of heating inside the analyzer room, because if you miss this kind, then you would have the problem that it's stopped and then everything would not run. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's really necessary to focus on the details and to go to the end and yeah. not stopping yeah. in the middle. You need 100% yeah. solution, not only a 95%. Yeah. yeah. This is so uh, This is so great to, to hear that um, because we always, you know, talk about when we have the discussion about the heating probes or the heated, the gas sampling probes heated and the heated sample line and the crucial point, just a small point from the connection. I mean, condensate can happen in every very small cold spot. And that's nice to hear from from a real project that you, um, yeah, prove that this is super important. Mm -hmm. It's a good message. Yeah, so we have seen the analyzer room like it was, and this was uh, the analyzer room like it was. After we have done our work, and you see the three maximum GCs inside, it was really close altogether, but it's everything okay. We um, also talked about security reasons when you open the door and everything is fine so far. And you see how the room itself has changed. And of course, this was a great collaboration between all parties, Cool, PSG, and Siemens. And yeah. um, 
we were very happy with the collaboration and the project. So, and as a st customer statement, and so this is something that I can um, tell, um, was by using the additional GCs as a control element, improved process stability, distillate qualities, and energy consumption have been the major outcome of this project. And of course, like Harald said before, yeah, customers do not say the payback time is bap, 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 but, I, but I think the message here is clear. So there was a value. Yeah. There was a value. Yeah. For this yeah. reason, I think such GC projects and um, system projects are really worthy to think about and to search Absolutely. and look for a good partner. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, um, guys, um, I think we run a little bit right? <laughs> over time. <laughs> we had a little bit over time, but uh, still, I think, uh, yeah, there was so much insight. We had the theory, um, you showed the product, um, you showed a real life project and example. And um, yeah, I, I think we will not cover the, the Q&A session as usual, but I can say we will have um, we will answer all questions that people raised here in LinkedIn, and obviously it's also possible to to give us a direct uh, message, and uh, yeah, we are we are happy to answer this. Um, Thorsten and Harald, I really want to thank you for your time. I think it was uh, super interesting and you shared some, yeah, also some insights, some innovation. That's actually what we are looking for here in this format. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear that uh, uh, heated sample lines are <laughs> also used in, in, in the future. No, because I mean, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of discussions you know, in, in situ measurements and uh, um, yeah, sensors, uh, which will not have the sample handling system anymore. But I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big difference to really integrate something which has to work for a long time. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you again for sharing that this. It was a great pleasure to have you uh, as, as guests here and um, stay safe and uh, see you soon. You too. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.